The topic of this lesson is predicting with linear models. And what that means is taking information that is already sort of put into a linear graph or a linear equation and using it to predict future data past the point where you already have actual physical records. And we're going to use information from a prior question you might recognize if you caught the lesson on uh, fitting a line to data. This information was sent in by a gentleman, Liam, from California. And what we've done here is document the average number of nightly visitors through a period of five months, January, February, March, April, May, and then we plotted on our graph the number of visitors for each month. And each of these points here represent one of those plots, and you can see they, they correlate to the data over here. Then what we did was find an average line that uh, gave us sort of an educated guess for how that information changed over time and plotted it and then found the equation of that line. So now what we're going to do is use this information to predict what might happen in the future. We only have data through May, so what we want to do is see what might happen if we were to continue this data on out through June or July based on the average of what's happened so far. Now if you take a look at the graph here, um, you can see that our line starts up here at 7 and then by the next point over, it's gone down, uh, sorry, it start, starts up here at 35, seven, 7 ticks, which is 35. It's gone down to 30 by the time we get to our first tick, and then gone down to 25 by the time we get to our second, and so forth. So every time it goes down five points on this graph, it goes over one point on this graph. Now each of our ticks here may represent five, but what we're talking about is one tick on the graph. So we've changed our scale here, but our line really, based on the scale of this graph, is down one over one. It's just that each down one here represents five points. So if we go down one over one on our line here, we can see that the change is the same every month. So we can figure our slope as if it's down one over one, then our slope, m, is negative one. So every month, we go down one tick here, and then over to the next month, down one tick, over to the next month. And since each tick represents five visitors, if we're starting here in May at 10 visitors, then by June, when we go over to the next month, we go down another tick on the left-hand side, which is five more visitors. So our average, our guess at what would probably happen in June is that there would be five less than 10, or five visitors. So our average change, we call that delta, our average delta between each month is five visitors per month, down five visitors per month. So if we then take a look at July, we're going to go from June to July, that's one more month, we're going to go down another five visitors. So by July, we would assume that there wouldn't be any visitors, which is the last point we have marked here. So if we add June and July onto our graph, we can see where those, those average points, those calculated points probably are. Now, chances are it probably won't be exactly five or be exactly zero if they were to actually calculate, you know, to document the number of visitors, but they would be in that range assuming that the change continues on the trend that it's had. This kind of information is extremely useful in, say, the stock market or in um, calculating the descending population of a town or the ascending population of a town over time. We can't always get the numbers exactly right, but we can get the information close enough that we can make valid predictions about what's going to happen in the future and prepare for it.